Okay, sample problem 2-2. Two, two. <clears throat> Combine the forces P and T. Here's P acting there at B and T, which is this cable, tension in the cable, 600 and 800, P and T. Combine them into a single equivalent force R. Okay, so first thing, it's a concurrent force. All right. All right, so what? how would we do this? Well, one way is uh, parallelogram law, right? So that's P. P is acting there at B, like that. Okay? And there's T. And you complete the parallelogram, and there is your equivalent force R, your resultant, your vector sum. So that's great. This is a this is the the geometrical solution or the graphical solution. Um, but now we need to find out what is R, what is the magnitude of R, and what is this angle. Okay, one mark. Get one mark for this. <laughs> okay, so here in this example, they also show a graphical solution, meaning they actually physically try to draw these forces to scale and then they physically measure this with a ruler. Uh, I'm not sure if we would ever do something like this but just read through this to see if you understand that. Um, but let's move on to this guy, the geometrical solution. Um, and for that we would need the law of cosines okay, to calculate the angles or the law of cosines and the law of sines. The sine law and the cosine law would allow us to find the magnitude of this vector and this angle. So if we choose just one of these triangles, you can either choose that one or that one. Um, they've chosen this one. Okay. Uh, in order to get R, R would be R squared is 600, it's the length of that side squared, plus the length of that side squared, okay, minus 2 times 600 times 800, times the cos of the angle alpha, okay, so the square root of this, the square root of that gives us the actual value of r, but where do we get alpha? How do we get alpha? So as you can see, this is this is what alpha is. Alpha is given in the original problem as this angle here between the cable and the horizontal um, direction. So if we draw our parallelogram, we can see that that angle there is that angle there, okay? Which is that angle there. So that's alpha, that's alpha. So you can see. Those are the same angles there. All right. So what is this alpha? Well, alpha is, they calculate alpha like this. Tan of alpha, okay, is equal to, so the tan of this angle, can you see this triangle here? So the tan of that angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So what is the opposite? Opposite is the length BD, which is what? That length there is 6 sine 60. So you've got another right angle triangle here. You've got a right angle triangle there, and you've got a right angle triangle there. So all we're doing is we're looking for that vertical distance BD, so we've got the 6 sine of 60 gives us that value there, the opposite, divided by the adjacent, which is AD, AD. So as you can see, AD is going to be 3 plus 6 cos 60, this length plus that length. So 3 plus 6 cos 60, and you get an angle of 40 point nine degrees. So we've got that alpha now. We can plug it in there and we can get our R. Okay? Good stuff.
So this is using the parallelogram uh, law with the law of cosine. So now we've got r, we've got the magnitude of r, but what's the angle? For the angle we can use the sine law. So 600 divided by sine of theta is equal to 800 divided by sine of that angle is equal to r divided by sine of that angle. Please make sure that you know the sine rule. So 600 over sine theta is equal to, right, you need to obviously know, you need to have one unknown here. So you can't say 800 over another unknown, then you're going to have two unknown angles. But we know what r is and we know what alpha is, so we have r, this is 524 divided by sine 40, and we can solve for theta, and that is 48.6. So now we've got the magnitude and the direction. But now there's another way, which is your algebraic solution, and that is to decompose these forces into their x and y components. Okay? So, we know that this 600, we know that actually that is also alpha there, that angle there is alpha. So we've got 600, so we've got two forces. Um, let's look at what's happening in the x. Rx is the sum of the forces in the x, which is 800, minus the component of the 600. Okay, So it's going to be 600 cos of alpha, minus 600 cos of alpha, which is at 40.9, so we've got our Rx. And in the vertical direction, there's no y component here, but there's a y component here, so it's minus 600 sine of alpha, sine of 40.9, so we've got minus 393. We combine these two into vector form or into a vector diagram. See, we've got Rx, 346, and we've got Ry, which is minus 393. And there is, using the parallelogram law again, we get our resultant R, our vector sum. And then to get theta is simply tan to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent. So we got that and we get our angle of 48.6. And then you can also write it in vector notation. This times I minus that times J. Okay.